Today, we will continue the simulation of our microprocessor and see how its clock works and also understand what pipelining is all about. The aim of this video is to try to simulate a real-life processor so you can see it and understand it better. In the last video, we saw how the CPU works at the bare metal level, and today is a continuation, so you may want to watch that video before this one for better understanding, as this video goes a step deeper than the previous one. The link is in the description. So, let's bring back the CPU from the previous video and also add a register at the output of the ALU. This register is generally known as an accumulator. And once again, let's put a new set of instructions in the flash and some data in RAM. We will use the decimal numbering system to represent bits for simplification. And also, for those that may be confused, a microprocessor is another name for a CPU. This is the table that contains a customized instruction set we made for today's video. A CPU clock is the tiny electrical pulse that keeps the entire processor working in a timed, organized, and synchronized way. Think of it like the heartbeat of the CPU. It can be generated internally by the CPU or externally through a crystal oscillator. At each clock cycle, the CPU processes part of the instruction. A clock cycle is from the beginning of the rising edge to the beginning of the next rising edge. The speed of the clock is measured in clock cycles per second. Its unit is hertz. That means 5 hertz is 5 cycles per second, and 200 megahertz is 200 million cycles per second. Hi, everyone. If you're enjoying the content, make sure to subscribe, like, and share this video. Your support really helps the channel grow and motivates us to keep creating even more useful tutorials and projects. Remember from our previous video, we said that the CPU executes each instruction in three fundamental phases, the fetch phase, the decode phase, and the execute phase. Well, it is the clock that makes this possible. The control unit uses the rising edge of each clock cycle to know when to trigger the right circuit or send the right control signal. Let's add a clock source to the CPU and run the program in flash to visualize how it all comes together. During the rising edge of the first clock cycle after startup, the control unit enables the read wire of the flash and the first instruction is loaded into the instruction register. The wires stay that way until the rising edge of the next clock cycle. The instruction that was loaded is a load instruction. The next phase is the decode phase. During the rising edge of the next clock cycle, the control unit enables the decoder circuit and the load instruction is decoded. And finally, the control unit enables the read wire of the RAM and passes the address from the instruction to the memory address bus, and then selects the first register through the multiplexer to load the value from RAM into. All these signals are sent at the rising edge of the third clock cycle to complete the execute phase, and thus the first instruction has been executed. This CPU was able to execute one instruction in three clock cycles, that means if we have a 16 MHz clock, we would be able to execute approximately 5.3 million instructions every second. Now that is very fast, but there is something better than clock speed. This brings us to the next part of the video, which is pipelining. You may or may not have noticed that the control unit can be in more than one phase simultaneously. That is, it may be fetching one instruction, decoding another instruction, and executing another instruction at the same time. This is called pipelining, where the CPU processes more than one instruction at a time. So, while the CPU is fetching an instruction, it is decoding and executing other instructions. Pipelining is a huge feature in modern microprocessors, as it helps the processor run programs faster. Now, let us simulate with the clock signal in motion. The second instruction is loaded, and while it is being decoded, the third instruction is loaded. Then, the fourth instruction is loaded while the third is decoded and the second is executed. At this stage, the pipeline is full because the CPU is operating on the maximum number of its pipeline stages. In other words, we cannot fit in more phases. At the next rising edge of the clock, the third instruction is executed while the fourth is decoded, and finally, at the last rising edge, the fourth instruction is executed. These diagrams show the relationship between each pipeline stage and the clock state.
These instructions are simple arithmetic operations, load, load, add, and store. The CPU we simulated without the pipeline was able to perform one instruction in three clock cycles, while the pipelined CPU performed the remaining three instructions in five clock cycles. That means if we have a 16 MHz clock, we would be performing 9.6 million instructions per second. This is such a huge gap that it shows the significance of a pipelined processor, with about 4 million extra instructions performed. Our customized CPU would look like the ARM7, whereas in some microprocessors, the pipeline stages are more than three, like the ARM9, which has five pipeline stages. A pipeline CPU improves performance, but it has some important disadvantages. Please feel free to pause the video so you can read some of the disadvantages. That will be all for today. We will cover topics on embedded systems subsequently. Please subscribe and ensure to like and share. Also, feel free to comment. Thank you.